Um, Asalaamu As Alaikum everyone, um, I'm Samina Hussain and this is Aruj Abdullah, uh, we're the Karima Health Champions, um, we're here today to try and educate the Asian community, the South Asian community about lung cancer. Um, so today we're going to be talking to you about lung cancer, um, the signs, symptoms, what to look out for um, and just raising awareness. Um, so I, I'm a therapy radiographer by background, I've done that for about 25 years. Um, in my working life I've seen um, a massive increase um, in the Asian population getting cancer. So that's different forms of cancer. Um, back then when I qualified a long time ago, um, one in four people used to get cancer but we've actually now, um, the stats are one in two. Um, and the sad thing is I work over at Mount Vernon Cancer Centre um, and the increase in Asian people that we see um, and what makes me most sad is that the outcomes are so bad for, for our community because people are not aware of what to look out for. Um, they might be going to the doctors and the doctors don't take them seriously because they don't know what they, you know, they might, they might not be able to explain themselves properly. So we, we've got this series of talks that we're going to be doing to try and educate people um, to know what kind of, uh, what, what the signs and symptoms are. So, you know, people will take you seriously when you go there. Um, you know, one, one in two people now gets cancer. Um, I don't want to scare anyone, um, but I just want to raise the awareness and um, highlight to people what is going on out there. Um, and also to, to tell you, actually, if it's caught early, um, the outcomes are much better. So early detection, detection saves lives, and that's what we're here for tonight. Um, and we, you know, even if we can help one person, uh, if you've got any questions or, you know, you want us to cover something else if we if we can't tell you straight away we'll get back to you um and um so i'm going to pass over now to aruj who's gonna go through this and then we'll um we'll carry on thanks okay so i hope you can all see the slides so cancer is when cells in the body divide in an uncontrollable way when this happens in the lungs what's when it, happens, when it starts in the lungs, it's called lung cancer. Um, in lung cancer, the cells divide and form a tumour in the lungs. Um, cancer that begins in the lungs is called primary lung cancer. Cancer that spreads to the lungs from another place is known as secondary lung cancer. Okay, there are two types of primary lung cancer, small cell and non-small cell cancer, with non-small cell cancer being more prominent. Okay. Um, so as you can see, from the diagrams there, lung cancer is the third most common type of cancer in the UK across both men and women. There were 47,941 new cases in 2017 alone. So there was a study by Jack et al in 98 um, that showed, that looked into survival rates of lung cancer in the Asian community. They found that Bangladeshi and white men and white women had the highest rates of lung cancer in the populations that were studied. Bit of stats. We've got some public health data shows between 2014 and 2018, 42.8% of patients diagnosed with lung cancer in Bucks, Oxfordshire and West Berkshire lived another year. This was above the national average um, and an improvement on the 2006-2010 data. So we're here today to emphasise that prevention is key. Yeah. So the next slide is to show causes and risk factors of lung cancer. So smoking is the obvious you know, cause of lung cancer, but there are other causes that you might not have known about. Right, so we've got... Uh, okay, yeah, we've got... Do you change slides on that? Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we'll carry on this one. Yeah, so radon, this is an odourless gas, radioactive gas that can seep into buildings, including your house. Okay, there's workplace chemicals like arsenic, asbestos, nickel, um, that are quite dangerous. There used to be a lot of cases of asbestos. Um, but since 2000, that's not really been used in buildings. But if there is in buildings, and if it is disturbed, and it is inhaled, it can cause problems. Um, I mean, air pollution is another one. Particles from wood stoves, wild wildfires, wildfires, power plants, um, they can all play a role. Um, so genetics, Gen certain DNA changes make you more susceptible to developing lung cancer. Um, you know, if anybody wants to know the genes, we've got them. Um, radiation therapy, so the treatment of an earlier cancer can actually sometimes trigger a new cancer. 
Um, and there are other lung disease. People with COPD and pulmonary fibrosis are at increased risk of getting lung cancer. So you want to add to that? Yeah. yeah. So um, one of the things that I've noticed in the workplace um, is that lung cancer doesn't always get diagnosed um, early enough, and people don't always know that they've got lung cancer until it turns into secondary lung cancer. So it spreads into the bones, um, and the other term for that is metastases. At that point, point, it's already got out of your lungs. Um, you know the way the, the the body works. It can either go to the bones or it can go to the um, brain. Um, often we find people who have, especially you know, I've treated people if they started smoking when they were I don't know 15 or whatever, um, and they've smoked for 20 years. You know, by 30 years time, if they've smoked for 30 years, they they are very likely to get lung cancer. It's a very, very aggressive form of cancer and it spreads very quickly. Um, and, you know, um, one thing I was telling these guys about a little while ago was um, a gentleman that came in for treatment. Um, it was somebody I recognised from school. Um, he was in a, we were doing cord compression. So that's when things spread into the bone and it's, it's actually in the spinal vertebra and it's compressing. Um, so, so this guy had lost his function, so he wasn't, you know, he didn't have control over his bladder, um, wasn't able to walk, was in, was in a, a trolley. Um, and I, and I recognised his wife, so I said, oh, you know, what are you doing here? And she, she said, oh, I'm just here with, you know, whoever. Um, and it kind of bothered me because it was somebody, you know, it could have been one of my loved ones. It could, it was, weren't, the couple weren't very old. Um, anyway, it turns out that it was, um, a couple whose, whose child went to school with one, with my youngest. So their, their little boy was only two years old at the time um, and you know, we, we were meeting in preschool. So, so this guy ended up having um, treatment for, for spinal cord compression. He didn't know he had lung cancer at this stage, so it already spread into the rest of his body. Um, so that's already palliative treatment. His cord is already compressed, so he's already lost function, so we can't save that. Um, and within two months, um, that must have been around sort of a March time. At April, I went to the school, Easter, whatever it was that was going on, um, to be told that he'd passed away already. So, so that's how quickly people's lives change. And that's why we're here tonight and, you know, for quite a few more evenings where, you know, we're giving up our time to do this, to try and educate people, to raise an awareness. Because sometimes these things, it's too late. And when it's too late, there's nothing you can do about it. But we, you know, we're trying to raise awareness and raise and you know educate people to try and stop these things from happening yeah inshallah inshallah are we still on we are you just taking the powerpoint off of your share again but you can't yes, carry on talking and share yeah right so um, avoidable risk factors. So tobacco smoke is obviously um, something to avoid. Um, secondhand smoke. So even if you don't smoke, but you hang out with people that smoke, that's just as damaging for you. Um, exposure to radon, as we've already discussed. Exposure to asbestos, arsenic, nickel. So if that is something that you are finding that you are encountering in the workplace, um, please you know talk to your employers. They're, they're, you know you shouldn't be put at that risk. Um, unavoidable risk factors previous exposure to radiation so if you've had a previous cancer um, you know that that's unavoidable family history of lung cancer so if you've got a family history of lung cancer please be extra cautious get yourself checked if you feel like you know any any symptoms that you've got that you think not quite right get yourself checked um, air pollution that's something unavoidable unfortunately these days um, factors with unproven effects I mean marijuana there, there's no concrete data out there, um, but obviously it's not healthy, it's not good for you. Um, E-cigarettes, unfortunately at the moment we don't know the dangers until a good like, you know, mm. 10, 15, 20 years we down. Don't know. We don't we, know. We don't know what, yeah. it, what it's going to do to you. Um, I mean, there was something that came out, talcum powder, talc or talcum powder. So whether people who have long-term exposure to talc particles at work, um, such as talc miners, are regularly um, at high risk of lung cancer from breathing them in. I've lost the slides. I'll, I'll put them on. You yeah, can. Fine. So, I mean, again, like I said, we're here today to say prevention is key um, to, you know, to get into that stage. Yeah, I mean, it can be treated. If you're lucky, you know, inshallah, it can be treated if it's picked up early. Um, I mean, your lives are affected in a big way from the treatment, from the chemotherapy. Yeah. You know, your family's lives are affected 
by it. You know, your loved ones are all affected by it. Especially in this day and age where people aren't allowed to go in um, and be with their, well, you know, with with their COVID, people. Yeah. yeah, with COVID, um, you know, when they're going through these kind of life-changing treatments and they've got no one to be by their side um, and help them, you know, that, that's, it's scary times for people. I'll change the slide. Okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah, if we can get the next slide, please. Um, so here I just want to spend a bit of time talking about the signs and symptoms. Um, so in the early stages of lung cancer, sometimes there are usually no signs and symptoms. So, you know, it's really difficult. Um, they develop as the condition progresses. So that's why it's so important that when you do start getting symptoms that you get help straight away or get checked. Um, you know, don't worry about wasting your GP's time or anything like that. You know, they're there for a reason. Get yourself checked. So if you can get through to them. Yeah, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Um, yeah, so a, a cough, any cough that's lasted for more than two or three weeks warrants a check. Okay, a worsening cough definitely warrants a check. Um, if you keep getting recurrent chest infections, so this is like, you know, even if you're adults, you're old as your granddad, keeps getting a chest infection, you know, there's something there, get, get it checked. Coughing up blood is a major sign that something's not quite right. Any blood, blood in the urine, blood in the sputum, anywhere, any blood that you know, is definitely warrants um, a referral to the GP straight away. Pain upon breathing and coughing. There's persistent breathlessness um, that's a sign. Now, unintentional weight loss, that can be a kind of a sign for a lot of sinister things. So if somebody is losing weight unintentionally, and some must have liked to lose it, like, you know, <laughs> it doesn't happen. But, you know, unintentional weight loss is um, it definitely warrants a referral to the GP. If, you know, if, you're, if you're always feeling fatigue and weakness, I mean, I know fatigue is a bit of a long COVID thing as well, so it's going to be a bit hard, but, you know, fatigue and weakness definitely um, warrants a check from the GP. They might just want to do some blood tests and just see if you're lacking in anything, and inshallah that be it, but definitely warrant. Don't think that, oh, I don't know, I'm just not feeling it this week. Yes. Definitely but, warrants. But even check. with um, COVID, like at the moment with COVID times and everybody's got a cough, um, it's if things don't feel normal to you, if th something doesn't feel right, um, whether it's, you know, um, like you say, someone older in the family, if something doesn't feel right, just get it checked. And and if it means you have to be persistent, you know, that's what yeah. you need to do. Um, we, we just need to, to be aware um, and look out. And I know if you went to the GP at the moment and said, I've got a cough for two, three weeks, they probably won't let you in there and they want you to go off and get a COVID test. Um, but it's, it's look, you know, if you had a couple of these symptoms um, and, and, you know, your person's not feeling right, they just don't look right, just get it checked. If you have to exaggerate a little bit, then carry on. Have the COVID test and, you know, go back and say, this is what I'm experiencing. Another one was chest pain that gets worse when laughing, coughing and taking deep breaths. So, I mean, you know your body. Anything that doesn't feel right, anything, you know, that's not normal for yeah. you, get it checked. There's a question. Oh. What sport is there for people who stop smoking? What support? Oh, there's lots of support. Now, I'm a pharmacist, so I work in a pharmacy. Um, so go into most, go into any pharmacy that, um, the, any pharmacy say you want smoking cessation advice. There's Live Well Bucks, so the references will come up at the end. There's, I think it's Live Well, Stay Well Bucks. Um, I think they've got a free phone number that you give them a ring. Somebody will support you through the course. Some of the medications even free, or you get it on prescription, so you're only paying a prescription charge for it. Um, and they'll keep checking in on you every couple of weeks, because some people, that checking in helps. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it keeps them going. So there's so much out there that, you know, for people that can, um, to, that help you. You just got to have the willpower. Yeah, and it's important to get to to seek help. If you take that initial step, <clears throat> and I know it's not easy. You know, people, somebody who smoked for twenty years or whatever, um, you know, it's not easy to just give up just like that. But if you've got someone supporting you, you know, we'll do what we can. The the pharmacists, the the support networks out there, they'll do what they can to help you. Um, but you've got to have the willpower. Nobody else can make you do this. You have to take that step. And once you've taken that step, actually, it gets easier. Um, so I hear. Yeah. My dad did that. My dad was smoking for like 30 years plus and what he told himself one day was, I'm not going to smoke today. And he didn't smoke that day. He didn't tell himself, oh, I'm never going to smoke again because then his body would have been like, yeah. oh my God, you know, you know, having all those yeah. feelings. But he said, I'm not going to smoke today. And he didn't smoke that day. And he didn't smoke the next day. And once you, you know, it just takes a couple of days to get that out of your system, get yeah. the nicotine out of your system. And you know, your lungs will start clearing up. You'll feel better. You'll save so much money. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> give it a go. Look, we've got Ramadan coming up around the corner. You know, use that as a trigger point to see if you can, you know, kick the habit. Anybody wants any more information, please do get in touch. We'll give us your details and we can um, get back to you. We can, you know, ring up. I don't mind ringing up Live Well, Stay Well Bucks, mm. uh, making an appointment to get someone to give you a ring if that's easier. 
And e-cigarettes are a bit scary as well because we don't know what the long-term effects we are. Don't. I know there was a study, I went to a conference not that long ago, and there was a study which said that there was oil deposits inside. So, so we don't know what the effects are of that yet. Um, and at some point, you know, we're going to start getting lung cancer patients coming through with with, Younger. with that. They're already quite young. Yeah. Lung cancer patients are already quite young, but with a different kind of... Um, you know, yeah, you're inhaling chemicals, aren't yeah, you? you? And you don't it's know the oily effect. deposit that gets left inside the lungs. So it's you know it's something that hasn't been. Um, there's not a lot of research being done on it, and and actually you need long term research. Um, you know things take ages to develop and um, for us to see the effects. And you know these e-cigarettes have come up, and every you know corner's got um, e-cigarette shops, and they're so easily available, and people don't. You know, they don't think they're doing something disgusting, but actually, it's still equally um, damaging to your health. It is. With the e-cigarettes, there's all the concept of passive smoking. Yeah, that passive smoking. You know, it, sometimes some people say it's worse, but passive smoking is it, honestly it's just as bad as smoking. And shisha is like smoking ten cigarettes. Shisha, because you actually the the flavouring, so your pores are open in your mouth as well. So mm. that's not only lung cancer; that could go lead to mouth cancer. And that, that a lot of people do because they think they're a bit cool, but actually, yeah. um, you know, it's, 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 double, like, it's double the danger because yeah. you're you're inhaling that, and then you, the flavour is opening up the pores in your mouth, and then mm. the chemicals are going in. Um, so that that's double mm. the danger there. I remember there was an Asian couple that I grew uh, that I grew up around, and they um, the the gentleman had smoked for a lot of his life. Um, but the lady ended up getting lung cancer and dying from it. Um, and, you know, he, he was fine. Um, probably not passive. fine, had other issues, but passive, passive smoking, smoking had killed her. So, you know, be aware. Be aware if you've got children, if you've got... I know, um, you know, when we were growing up, people would come to your house and they would sit there and there'd be an ashtray and whatever. You know, we don't have that anymore, thank God. But it's still, it's still, we've got... You know, um, I was driving, driving somewhere and I saw a whole load of young kids. I think we went away... Um, for the weekend and I saw a load of young kids smoking and I did, in this day and age I don't know why anybody smokes um, but it's probably because I've been around cancer for you know 20 odd years so um, I see what it does to people but there's so much out there you know that we all know even you know I don't know maybe it's because I've always been a non-smoker that I don't understand I maybe there's more of that out on social yeah, media but so it's I don't just think there's enough out there I mean all yeah. the, if you want the information it's out there but yeah. it's not actually put out there yeah. for youngsters to see yeah but so many young people um, smoking and it's just I don't know it doesn't make sense to me but probably because I'm old <laughs> um, so just a bit of a, when we were talking about prevention is key um, I mean we talked about smoking cessation but a balanced diet um, you'll be surprised at the effects of a balanced diet I mean what you put in is what you get out so everything you what you're going to put into your body is what you're going to get out so you know low fat high fiber diet five portions of fruit and veg a day plenty of whole grains can reduce your risk of lung cancer other cancers and even heart disease so again that live well stay well bucks website um, is a local website and it's got loads of information out there um, as to what you know healthy diet anything like that but you did a course didn't you about healthy cooking oh yeah asian, asian yes food. it was hard to cook um there's so much out there now but i i ran some um i ran a course it basically it came from i'm usually trying to lose weight um and stop oh, yeah. <laughs> um but it was uh it was something that um i i'd started slimming world at the time and i'd adapted a lot of our recipes um, that I was using at home to get rid of the oil and to try and sort of cook in a healthier way. Um, and then once I did that, I think um, my brother, Cal, got um, just a bit. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then he got me to make some recipes and take them along to one of these sessions. Um, and from there, I somehow got found by Karima. Um, and I did some, I ran some sessions where I wrote recipes and I taught people to cook uh, in a healthy way. And it's just putting those... Um, just putting it out there that actually there's easier ways we don't need to we can still have kebabs and not fry them it's making that healthy choice isn't it you can you can still have the things you enjoy but have them in moderation um you know if you if you want i still have a small say if my mum's made it oh, wow, um so. but you know because that would be rude not to mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's it's like you know i don't have it every day um and a lot of the time you know we've got an air fryer, air fryer or an oven air fryer you know, is brilliant and the kids the kids are you know, even when they were a bit younger, we've had it for about six years now, mm. and you just stick it in there. We don't have to be worried about, um, you know, when, when they get home from school, what they're going to eat. They can stick. It's a healthier way of, of eating. Um, and, yeah, and that's what it is. It's instilling healthy habits into people. Small changes. Um, I know we've been trying to get my dad to reduce his salt, and it's really difficult because people get used to uh, the way, you know, the way of they, uh, that they Goodness, live. Yeah. Um, 
But at the moment, we can just tell everyone that their taste buds have changed and reduced the salt. Yes, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think if the younger generation can make those changes or demand those changes from your parents. But I think people are a lot more aware. There's aware. a lot more awareness in schools. Uh, I've even done some here with the Karima kids, actually. Um, I've done some cooking sessions here. And it's if, if the kids can be more aware, then, you know, we're educating from the ground up. Um, but it's just, if, if the person who's in charge of the cooking just reduces even the oil a little bit, just, you know, use well, healthy the spoon. oil, yeah. rape, rapeseed oil, something like that. Olive, yeah. olive oil's got shifar, you know, use that. Yeah. But it's still not, you know, we, we're used to glug, glug, glug. It's getting rid of that kind of mentality of pouring it. Um, and when you use it with a spoon, you actually become a lot more aware. And it, it's not too difficult. I can even make pilau rice with, um, with one tablespoon of oil. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, so exercise. Now, I mean, the, you know, the national guidance is 120 minutes, moderate intensity, ex aerobic activity a week, um, with strength training on two days a week. So, you know, any change that you can make to your lifestyle, um, you know, there, there was there was a walking group. There was last year, or I think before COVID, there was a walking group here. You know, if anyone wants to do any of these things, we're more than happy to put you in touch or try and you know get these things going for our community because that's what we're here to do. Yeah. So, you know, you, but you've but you got to want to make that change. And it doesn't take long, you know, just having a walk, a couple of walks around. Well, well, actually, during laps. January, I was, um, I, I got COVID um, a few months ago, T took it out of me. My lungs were, you know, I'm asthmatic, so I was whacked for about two months, wasn't able to even walk up the stairs. Um, so I then, uh, I, I do a bit of work with another charity and her, the lady, her grandson is at Great Ormond Street. So Great Ormond Street do a running off Christmas um, thing. So they were doing one mile a day for the month of January. So I, I started with that. Um, I used to drag out someone from my family every evening. My husband found it too cold some of the days. Um, but, but actually about two weeks in, I decided I'm going to double it. So now I'm, I'm on, I've done 60 miles through January and I've got two miles to go before the end of January. Um, and you know, that's a, that's a change that I've, I've made and Alhamdulillah, you know, one of the days with my little girl, I walked all the way to Windsor and back. Come so on. it's from, not from here, it's from Slough. Um, but you know, it was about 10 miles by the evening, by the end of the evening. And you know, I would never have been able to do that. And if somebody told me to walk 60 miles in January, I'd have been like, mm, you know, it's not going to happen, but actually, um, I'm even thinking of carrying it on. So it's, it's making those healthy habits and and carrying them on. And if you've got people, a couple of people supporting yeah, yeah, get you, your friends out you know, with you. The weather's getting a bit better. The days are going to start getting longer. We need to look after our bodies. Nobody else will do do that for us. We have to take that initiative. Um, and and for our children yeah. and our elders actually, because we're we're that sandwich generation where we you know they're for our kids and our um, our adults, our um, you know parents and you know, grandparents for some of you, and, and that's what it is. We need to look after ourselves. We need to promote those healthy living yeah. habits to yeah. children so they don't think of it as like, oh, we're trying to be healthy. It's and not yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. we're it's just trying to be healthy today. Yeah. It's the norm. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. Yeah. Next slide, please. Um, so, so there's a range of ex um, diagnostics. So if you were to see a find... GP. Yeah. yeah, if you see yeah. any symptoms, see a GP. Yeah. They will investigate your symptoms for you yep. using the following techniques. Yeah, so if you went to the GP, they would send you off um, to go and have some tests at the hospital. A lot of the time, it's not actually cancer. Um, you know, they'll do a, do a test x-ray, they'll have a look. If that, you know, that um, shows something, they'll do a CT scan, which is um, you go through like a donut. It uses low energy x-rays, a uh, well, low dose of x-rays compared to... Um, you know, not having it diagnosed, so it's, it's weighing up that risk benefit. So it uses more than um, a normal X-ray, but it gives you slices, like like a slice of bread through your body. Um, and, and detailed images. Yeah, it's detailed yeah. images. Um, and there's, you know, if they if they weren't sure from that, then there's uh, a PET CT where they inject um, some stuff into you, and then they can see what they want to clearer, or they can do a bronchoscopy where they put uh, a camera down on you. Um, and if they, they would only do that if they if they found something of some kind that they wanted to look at um, and and if they did that they would get you to consent um, to have a biopsy at the same time so you know they would, they would go in have a look um, get the results of the biopsy and then they'd be able to tell you uh, but but there's still a lot of fear and you know don't be scared if you do find something it's better that it gets checked yeah. it's better that it gets found out and it's better that it gets treated rather than you going into denial because you're scared and it grows invades other areas spreads everywhere and then there's nothing anyone can do I mean, early detection is key, isn't it? Yeah, like prevention early is detection. key, but early detection is key. Yeah, exactly. So, treatment. 
So there's three types of surgeries that you can have done. So, so just a quick one, if anybody wants any more information in any of those um, the techniques or any of the um, x-rays or CT or whatever, just drop us an email and we'll um, send you over the information. Yeah, we try to keep it basic to not bore anybody with it. But anybody wants any or scary further, or, yeah, scary. Yeah. Or, if anybody wants any further information, please just get in touch. Yeah. So surgery. There's three different types. So lobectomy, when mm -hmm. one or more parts of the lung are removed. Pneumectomy, where the entire lung is removed, or the segmentectomy, a small piece of the lung is removed. Yeah. Yeah. It all depends on the stage and where where the cancer is spread yeah. to. Depend to depend on what surgery you'd have. So it's the same as um, with breast cancer or anything else. So a lobectomy, it will be removing that, that lobe that's affected. Um, and if it's you know quite a, a big lump or there's multiple lesions in your lung, then they might take that whole lump away, a uh, whole lung away, um, or that segment. So it all depends. And that will come from the detailed investigations they do. Um, you know, it, it all everybody's treatment is tailor made for them. Um, and that, that usually comes after a multidisciplinary meeting. So the surgeons, the oncologists, um, you know, everybody gets together, they have a meeting, they discuss the case, um, and then they take it from there. So it's not, you know, you might find one person had it like this and their treatment was so bad, and or somebody else might need chemo radiation where the chemotherapy goes along with the radiation, um, or somebody might not even need it. It just depends. Everyone's treatment for any, any kind of cancer is tailor-made for them, having had discussions, having looked at all the staging and grading, yeah. um, and that looks at you know where else it's spread, if it's got out of that area, or if it's still contained in there. Um, you know, it's, it's looking at the, the bigger picture before any treatment options are given. Um, but there are targets that they stay within. So once a diagnosis has been received, you would expect to receive your first treatment within 31 days of, of that diagnosis. So, you know, it's important to get the ball rolling um, and you know, getting, getting yourself checked out and any treatment started if that is what's needed. Yep. So that's surgery. Yep. We can get the next slide. Um, so radiotherapy uh, is is the next another option. Um, that's using high energy X rays to um, kill cancer cells. Uh, but the radiation can't distinguish between the good and the bad cells. So your normal cells are knocked out as well as your abnormal cells. Um, so so you might find like obviously if we could just knock out the cancer cells, we'd give a massive great dose, and but the the human wouldn't survive. So each tissue in the body has. Um, has a tolerance dose, has a tolerance that it can have up to. So what happens usually is people will be given 20 to 32 um, sessions of treatment where um, initially they'll go in, they'll have a scan, they'll have all their you know, planning done, the doctor will define the area that needs the treatment. So it's like, a, you know, if you've got a monkey piece of fruit um, and the, you know, we cut away a bit, and then you've got the little bit of microscopic spread. Um, so they'll take a margin um, and then there might be some little cells kind of lurking around and the radiation is there to try and get rid of those. Um, so, so every day the patient comes in, they lie on the bed, they don't feel anything. Um, we take x-ray images to check the position. So, you know, we're usually working within three millimeter accuracy. Um, so you get the patient on the bed, treatment's delivered, they go home. Um, you know, they think nothing's, they don't feel any different. They don't see anything, feel anything. Um, the only thing that they might, people are very nervous on the first day when they come in for treatment. Um, but you know, they see, see people, um, they're left in a room on their own, um, you know, but actually, you get as radiographers, we build a rapport with these people, um, and you know, you you guide them and you support them through the side effects and through the treatment. Um, there is a whole range of different um, treatments that would be available. Some people need to have chemotherapy with it. Um, there's a kind of radiation that's called CHART. It's um, continuous hyperfractionated accelerated radiotherapy, um, and that's when people get three treatments a day for 12 consecutive days, and that's to do with the way the cells divide, and it's trying to get them in there. Um, sort of phase of, of sitting out. So, so the aim is to get all the cancer cells while letting your normal t t cells recover every day. Um, so as the treatment goes on, um, you know, people do get a bit tired, uh, but you know, we, we do CT scans on a daily basis while we're treating, um, and that's for, to check for any collapses, or uh, lung cancer does, does respond quite quickly a lot of the time, so we keep an eye on, you know, is the treatment still effective, or does the patient need to be re-scanned and replanned? And you know, so, so everybody is kind of um, nurtured through their treatment, and it's, uh, we, we've got specific tolerances and, um, that we have to stay within. So, you know, if anyone has had radiotherapy and there's been sort of long waiting times or whatever, um, you know, people, 
we probably treat about 50 patients a day and at Mount Vernon we've got um, eight treatment units so you know that's a lot of people going through treatment but a lot of them will survive um, a 20 to 32 um, fraction treatment is is a radical form of treatment so it's a treatment where we're trying to cure you um, and you know these things it, it does make you feel quite rough sometimes people feel very tired uh, but actually you've got to look at the bigger picture and we're lucky in this country that we've got all these things available there's lots um, of support you know, out there and there's things places like and we don't have to pay for it like yeah. you know we my mum my got sick um, last year we went to pakistan and you know even going off to go get the little tablets you have to pay for everything we're very very lucky here we're fortunate um you know we need to make sure that we yeah well. yeah we need to make sure we use these resources so that's really therapy we'll prevent us getting there yeah. Yeah, sorry, there was some immunotherapy. Oh, and chemo, yeah, so, so chemotherapy. Done, yeah, immunotherapy is a group of medicines that stimulate your immune system to target and kill cancer cells. It can be used on its own or in combination with the chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. But with, yeah. um, with radical radiotherapy, it's a longer form of treatment with anything, with any, um, any cancer. Um, if, it, if we're trying to cure it, it's going to take longer because we've got to worry about the side effects. Um, sometimes people get palliative radiotherapy um, or we know that the um, certain cancers spread to the brain, um, certain lung cancers, so you know, they might give them prophylactic brain radiotherapy as well as their chest and that might be like 10 treatments where they have a mask made um, and that's not because cells are already in the brain, it's, it's um, to prevent, so it's a treatment to prevent um, cancer spreading into the brain. Uh, we do treat bone um, as well, so if it was a kind of a cord compression, that would be the metastases, that would be secondary cancer, uh, where, where it's spread into the bone and, and you know, give them, give them radiotherapy and that relieves the pain. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's targeted therapies, are also known as biological therapy. These are medicines designed to slow the spread of advanced non-small cell lung cancer. Um, there's other treatments, um, apart from what we've just already discussed, radiofrequency ablation, cryotherapy, there's which you mentioned, photodynamic therapy. So, you know, there's lots out there. Anybody that needs any more information, yep. um, please do just get in touch. You know, I, I don't want to kind of overwhelm you with all that information. Okay. Lovely. Um, so I think we've been over this before, but treatment depends upon the type of lung cancer that you have. So we've spoken about mm -hmm. the different forms of that. But I just said about the size and the position of the cancer um, and, you know, and the cells around it, how much it's spread, whether it's gone to like, the lymph nodes, if it's mm -hmm. gone to the bone, yeah. you know, all these different places. How advanced your cancer is. So, you know, has it been picked up end stage or, you know, is it early? So, you know, can we nip it in the bud? as it were. And then obviously it's through your know, underlying health conditions that you may already have, um, you know, your overall health, what else you've got going on. If you're young, you know, you might be able to fight it. If you're old, you know, you, is it worth mm. putting yourself through that chemo to prolong, prolong your life for two, three months? But that's way, weighed up um, for each yeah. individual patient. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, you know, as professionals, it's easy for us to sit there and say, like, you know, would, but, but in someone's life, what's another three months? Like, you know, for that person, that three months might be family, massive. Family, um, yeah. but, it's, but it's weighing it up. And sometimes as relatives of people, we want, for our own selfish reasons, I've been there, you know, when my mum wasn't well, you know, you, don't, you just, you don't, you don't want anything else to happen to them. And you, you know, you want to try everything, but it has to be weighed up. Like what is best for that patient? We what is going to be, yeah. It was picked up end stage and it would have, you know, it would have been horrible the quality for her. Of life. Yeah. You've got her quality of life would just wouldn't she wouldn't it wouldn't have been nice for her. And actually as relatives it was really sad that we had to do that. Touch. And her cancer was picked up end stage. I mean we should go to the doctors for years. Unfortunately it was also it's heartbreaking talking about it. But you know, her cancer was gallbladder cancer. It's a really tricky one that gets missed a lot. Yeah. Um, so she had lots of ultrasounds of her lower stomach, but it was gallbladder cancer, picked up end stage. Mm. You know, they said that she, you know, she's only 67 at the yeah. time. But it's and like, you know, they say they've got pain, they're not feeling well, but it gets overdosed. it gets disregarded because yeah. we don't have specifics to go and talk to the doctors. But, you know, we're in a better position now where, you know, we're all, we're all, you know, fortunate enough to be educated. We, you know, we, we speak the language. Um, you know, our parents, we've got to remember, your grandma, wouldn't have been able to speak the language that well, she wouldn't have been able to maybe articulate her words and say what she had to. You know, we're so blessed that we're able to, we can just pick up, you know, the phone. They can, but not everybody Google. out there can. If yeah. you, honestly, if you, need, if you need a hand, if you need any, we'll, we'll, we'll come with you to the doctors. Yeah. Um, honestly, mm -hmm. if anybody needs a hand like that, or just advice, mm -hmm. we can tell you kind of what to say. You tell us your symptoms, we can advise you yeah. on how, how best to approach it. I mean, I don't mind going with anybody to the doctors. But if you are Googling, um, be careful. Use, you know, uh, websites like the NHS. NHS websites have got yeah. a huge amount of stuff, um, you know, which is... Um, 
you, you don't want to, the last thing you want to do is start, you know, Googling and be on this big roller coaster of stuff that's not, um, that might not be true. But give us a shout, drop us an email or, you know, a message or get through to from, from one of the Karima guys to if you, if you need any help or, or support with anything. I need, even if you're not sure, if you do think, you know, you don't want to go to the doctor um, and bother the doctor, have a chat with us, but we, we know we're more yeah. than happy to refer you to who we think will find post. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so this was the different treatments for um, so non-small cell lung cancer. So you can have surgery to remove the cancerous cells, followed by the chemotherapy to destroy any remaining cells that might be around the They're tissue. Lurking around. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's spread too far. Chemotherapy and immunotherapy. Um, and then the small cell lung cancer, chemotherapy, um, alone or in combination with radiotherapy or immunotherapy. So again, like Baj said, um, there is a multidisciplinary team that look after you and we're very lucky. And the cancer, you know, the cancer in the, this association, just things that in this country, the service that we have is, you know, top to it, it really is. I think we're, we're very lucky. Um, but, you know, the aim is to not get there if you yeah. can. The, the, I think the whole purpose of these sessions is to try and educate people. Uh, uh, we did a session here um, for breast cancer not that long ago. Um, and actually, it was a bit sad because um, there was probably only about three people here that weren't my family that I'd made come. Um, but it's, you know, it's... I, I take it for granted because I've I've worked in radiotherapy for you know however long um, you know we as a family we're all much more aware we all talk about it we're not scared um, you know we had a brother who died of leukemia when he was eight so I fell into radiotherapy I didn't know what it was uh, I've even fallen into this um, but it's if I can even help to save one person if I can you know encourage one person to just go get help there was somebody who came to the session here when we we did one here live um and then we did one online because i unfortunately got COVID that day um but you know it's there were people here who were born and brought up in this country who are saying oh no we don't want to talk about it it's scary no we don't talk about it because it's scared what are we scared of you know i just if, if you just take one thing away from here today what are we scared of the stats are telling us one in two people gets cancer. I see it on a daily basis. I see it in a distressing way. Um, when it happens in the community, I see the aftermath. Because actually, in my happy little world at work, I believe everyone's got better. Um, and you know, the only people that you see um, that you feel a bit sad about are the ones that come back for treatment. Actually, a lot of the time, people, you know, it's spread and, and, it, and they don't come back because they're dead. Um, and you know we don't want to get to that point we're all you know we've got so much so many resources and everything available for us we need and it's not you know today we're, today we're talking about lung cancer breast cancer is something that you know we can check for one in one in seven um women will get breast cancer 150 women get diagnosed with breast cancer every day you know this is it's, it's so common i never used to see asians i trained at guys and tommies um a long time ago there weren't any asians um we're living in this society we're living this western lifestyle we're getting cancer like the people in the west we've got to become aware and we've got to get help you know we've got to it's, it's our duty upon ourselves to look after ourselves and our bodies um and you know just if you're not sure about something just drop one of us an email uh, you know go speak to your pharmacist speak to your gp i know it's really really difficult at the moment to get into gp surgeries but actually if you drop an email and say email. you've got something if you know what you're talking about and you've got a specific symptom you're talking about people will take you seriously you know it's educating ourselves we all need to educate ourselves um the help's out there we yeah. just need to yeah. utilize it and we need to not be scared we need to we need to you know get out there and get the help that we need um and and if we're scared what's going to happen you know if someone who's 24 is telling me she's scared what is that what is that showing to us that you know we do we uh, we've got to educate ourselves and you know if i wasn't passionate about this i wouldn't be here now talking about this you know i've got i i've got a job i've got a lot of stuff that goes on we we both have you know we're here because we 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 need people to talk about it and get the help that they need um and you know even one person saving one person's life you know the uptake on these sessions i don't know how many we've got you know um watching today and this is online so we might have people you know who, who watch it afterwards um and we're not used to this kind of stuff i don't do this you know this is this is not normal for us this is out for of my us, comfort zone yeah for <laughs> us to have put ourselves out here today um you know please please know your normal know what is normal for you you know if something doesn't feel normal to you 
please, please get help. And take this back to people like you're the older generation that might not be listening on you know on YouTube right now. They might not understand what we're saying mm. in that. But you know we we can have we, we're happy to talk to anybody in mm. Punjabi. We'll do anything that you want us to talk to anybody in. But whatever you've learned today, please just take it back mm. to people that is useful. You know, your granddad, there's grandmas that smoke. But but people like us would be you know the people who are hopefully listening would be the ones taking their relatives to the doctors. You know we we wouldn't be expecting our old mum or whoever to go to the doctors on their own. But if we're equipped with the right information and support, um, right um, knowledge, we'll be able to get them signposted to the right area and the, and it'll be quicker. I know in one of Iblal's um, statuses it said that, you know, we, we don't get taken seriously. Um, you know, it's not, the, the outcomes are not bad because we, we're we unaware. The outcomes are bad because we don't know what specifics to, to talk about when we get there. Um, not always, not always, because people, you know, um, Asian people probably are known to, you know, they've, even when we get patients coming in um, to the radiotherapy department, they'll be, you know, I, you know, I'm in so much pain or whatever. Whereas you've got the next person who's got it a lot worse, who's just getting on with it. And maybe, you know, I don't know, I don't know what that is, but we have, um, people get disregarded. Uh, you know, people think, oh yeah, you've always got a pain. Um, but actually we just need to stop and think. If there is a pain, we just need to get it looked at. Um, so this has just come up with the support, somebody asked a question earlier, um, the support that's available in the community. So smoking cessation, this live well, stay well bucks, that's got the website there. Um, it's a great website, lots of resources on this website about, you know, healthy weight. Um, the, yeah, honestly, I would recommend that. Um, or you can even text quit to 85222 um, and someone will be in touch with information. Um, there's GPs, the pharmacists that can advise on nicotine replacement therapy, healthy eating. Um, I mean, there's local exercise groups, um, you know, and some of them are, can even be funded. If you know somebody that is slightly overweight or obese, um, some of the, the classes can even be funded on the NHS. So you get in touch with your pharmacist. They're all running um, weight management campaigns at the moment because there's a lot going on that the NHS want pharmacies to do. So I'd probably go into any pharmacy. Um, I mean, I work for Boots, but go into any Boots pharmacy and they'll be able to advise you on weight management, happily refer you um, to your GP. Um, I mean, walking groups, Kruma were doing a walk, was it Kruma? Yeah, they were doing a walking group. You know, if anybody wants to get that set up again, you know, we're more than happy to, to try and, you know, and get that done here. Um, currently, there's no national screening, unfortunately, for lung cancer. Not, not at the moment. Um, it's just us being aware of what, you know, what yeah. we need to be. But, but the biggest thing is getting, you know, you can reverse things like diabetes, your cholesterol. You know, there's so just many things we can get ourselves can healthy. Um, yeah, and there's so much support out there. There's so many different pharmacists with, you know, which are offering people who speak the language. We've got no excuses. The thing is, we owe it to ourselves. I mean, Allah's given us his body um, and we owe it to Allah to look after it. Yeah. And in this country, we have, there is no reason for us not to do that. I mean, there's, there's food available that's healthy, there's exercise. You know, we can actually, you know, women can actually go out and walk the roads safely without, you know, the threat of being attacked. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no reason that we can't go out and do anything. Um, Macmillan Cancer Support, I mean, I'm a Boots Macmillan pharmacist. So Macmillan, you know, there's, there's a lot of support out there. Um, they'll talk to you about your finances. I mean, if you go on their website, they've got things in different languages. Um, there's a lot out there. And then again, um, I just thought I'd put this on there, that private private cancer tests, because sometimes, I mean, ideally it shouldn't be, it should be like a two week wait on the NHS, shouldn't it? If there's, ideally. if there's, um, but if, there is, if you've got risks of cancer, if there's symptoms, they, you know, it does get sped through. Um, you've just got to, you know, be per persevere. And, you know, if you've got that family history, be even more on the ball. You know, talk to your doctor annually and just say, look, I mean, is there any, can I have some bloods done? But sometimes we don't even know if we've got family history. You know, it's it's being aware of our body. It's knowing, uh, you know, we, we might have had people who, who died and, you know, grandparents or whatever. We don't know what they died of. We might not always be aware of that. Um, it's, it's just being aware of any changes, educating ourselves. This is a whole programme. We've got, you know, we're covering Lots of um, head cancers. and neck cancers. Uh, you know, we've got a whole range of things that we're doing for, you know, these next few months. Um, and it's just important to, to educate yourselves, to get that information. Um, and if you're not sure, give up, give one of us a you know, drop one of us an email. More than happy to talk to um, anybody. You know, you, you, you work help. for Boots, there's Lansdales, there's lots of pharmacies around, um, lots of people who are more than happy to help you or support you or send you in the right direction. Inshallah. You've just got to want to do it. It's all about the willpower. Yeah. And being aware. Being yeah. aware of what is normal for you. If you know you know what your normal is, you know, we've got to, we need to all slow down. Me, me as well. Like, I was around like a nutcase a lot of the time. It's just yeah. slowing down and... 
you know, just being mindful and and giving yourself that time. You know, as as um, women, mothers, you know, we're working mothers. A lot, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people that pull on us. Um, and, and that's the same for a lot of the people in the community. You know, like Karima have got all their volunteers and people who work here. There's, we've all got so many people pulling on us. But actually, we need to give up. We owe it to ourselves to even just for a five minute just to stop and give yourself, even if it means into your phone you put a reminder to, you know, have a meeting with yourself. It might be a really sensible one. Mm. <laughs> but it's, you know, giving yourself that time, just allowing yourself that time to just be. Um, well, you know what, but that's important. For people that, you know, your mums are never going to, mums are just so selfless anyway, yeah? Mm. So take that take that five minutes. Check with your mum, you know, how is she feeling? Has she got any symptoms? Mums are not going to go and say, oh, this is wrong with me, oh, like this, that, and the other. <laughs> they just get on with it. You know, take a few minutes. Ask your mum, you know, once a week. Sometimes you do it once a week. But, you know, ask your mum, mum, are you okay? You know, is there anything that you want to talk about? Or, you know, any symptoms like that. Ask your mum, gran, auntie, you know, no one's going to go and ask them. And if you um, don't do it regularly, they might think you've got Bahar. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, but it's making it the norm. Making yeah. it the norm. Yeah. Shut up. We've rambled on for quite a long time. Any final questions? Yeah, I mean, if does anybody have any final questions? But like Baj said, um, you know, we're available. Contact Karima. Someone, someone of us will get in touch. Um, no question is a silly question. Honestly, that's what we're here for. No question is a silly question. Anything you want support on, or you think you know you want you want some questions. You're not sure if you've got this symptom and whether you should go to the doctor or not. Give one of us a ring. Um, I, mean, I don't mind accompanying you or advising you, even going to the doctor or ringing the doctor on your behalf and just saying, you know, this is my, these are my concerns of so and so. Please, can you review that patient? Um, I'm happy to do that. Or even if anyone's got any ideas on how we can increase this awareness, you know, if you want us to come and talk somewhere, or you want to talk somewhere, you just need some resources. You know. We're more than happy. I'm more than happy to help you. You know, put we've got together. lots of resources. Um, I've got lots of leaflets from Macmillan. Yeah. Um, that I'm happy to to hand out. Yeah, yeah. Just to put it out there, just to get people to break down the stigma and break down the taboos, um, and you know, get get this um, this information ball rolling. Inshallah. Inshallah. Cool. Also, thanks. Sir. Alhamdulillah. Okay, say salam. Okay, then salam alaikum. Thank you very much. Hope we can help. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Ya Latifu, Ya Latifu, Ya Latifu, Ya Allah, Ya Latifu, Ya Latifu, Ya Latifu, Ya Allah, 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 Ya Ya Allah, Ya Karim, Ya Karim, Ya Karim, Ya Allah, Ya Karim, Ya Karim, Ya Karim, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya. Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Ya Allah, Ya Rahim, Ya Rahim, Ya Rahim, Ya Allah, Ya Rahim, Ya Rahim, Ya Rahim, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah.
Ya Allah, Ya Sattaru, Ya Sattaru, Ya Sattaru, Ya Allah, Ya Sattaru, Ya Sattaru, Ya Sattaru, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Allah, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Ghaffar, Ya Faru ya Allah 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 ya Allah